Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk through five tips that has helped me personally in reducing the development time and improving the quality of Office scripts. Everything that I'm going to be talking about today is captured in this page here. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description. If you like this video, do subscribe and leave a comment about any new video that you may wish to see. All right, let's get started. To help demonstrate, I'm going to go to this Excel spreadsheet and I'm already on the Automate tab and I've opened a script that I'm going to be using to walk through. The first step is in relation to the, uh, the, the IntelliSense feature. So IntelliSense feature is nothing but a tool that the IntelliSense uh, or the, the, the editor offers using the TypeScript service to help discover APIs and uh, discover any warnings or potential pitfalls that you may have in your script. So to get started, you can um, start with any object that you're interested in. In this case, workbook is the object that's passed to the main function. So if you want to discover what this uh, object has to offer, simply press the, the dot or the period and you will see all the APIs that this workbook has to offer. And as you type something along, it doesn't have to be at the beginning, but it'll filter only based on uh, methods that contains that word. And to select something, all you need to do is simply uh, press tab and figure out what you need to do in terms of the argument. And uh, you know, once you have the argument, you can continue to do the chaining by simply pressing dot, and then you can chain methods along uh, as long as the IntelliSense gives you the additional methods that you can chain. So this is one easy way to uh, explore the object model and also learn more about the API that you're interested in. And you can also hover over any method and it gives you information about um, the, uh, the, the description, the arguments, the return type, and so on. So use the facility offered by the IntelliSense feature to navigate and work through the script, especially in understanding the Excel object model. All right, so tip number two has to do with the usage of Excel value, uh, it's Excel range value. So range is a very fundamental object within Excel, and uh, it can consist of either one cell or a group of cells. So all of that is termed as a range. So in Excel, the value is what Excel stores uh, behind the scene. It may be different than what you actually see in the cell. So for instance, in this case, I have a date field here, uh, a date cell, and um, if I go change the the, the type of this to a general, you will see that it actually is stored as a number. So um, what you see may not be what you actually, uh, is what Excel stores behind the scene. When you're dealing with range values, you have to be careful about um, how you're interpreting it and how TypeScript interprets as you're coding along. So one technique is to tell TypeScript explicitly what type of value you're expecting. Here, to demonstrate that, I have a date here. Now I've written, or rather um, uh, reused this function called Excel date to JS date function. It takes in a serial date um, as a, an argument, which is of type number, and it does some computation and returns a JavaScript date. I may use that for um, additional processing purpose. But the point here is to demonstrate that I'm calling a function that expects a date. And now to begin with, I'm gonna read the, um, the range A1 and get its value. So when you get the value, you see that it, it could be of type string, number, or boolean. And since the script doesn't know what the value could be, it knows that it's one of those three types. So when I pass uh, that date that I just read, or a value that I just read, into this Excel date to JS date function, I have to tell TypeScript that, hey, this is of type number. Uh, otherwise, the TypeScript is gonna complain. Uh, so this is called uh, type assertion. So type assertion is nothing but overriding uh, the type at the compile time, saying, hey, I know what I'm doing. I expect this to be a number, and um, and hence TypeScript looks at that and says, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna warn you. So this is one easy technique to avoid those warning messages. Now note that in reality, this may not help you at runtime. So what I mean by this is, uh, so when I run this, let's see, I run this and it's gonna show me the JavaScript date, which is what I expect. But what if the cell here contains um, something else that you don't expect? Let's say I 
change this date to uh, some string value. When I run the same date, sorry, when I run the same script, it's gonna complain that this is an invalid date. Now that's because even though you said, you declared that, hey, this is a number, in reality, when you read at runtime, it is not, uh, not a number. So to avoid that kind of runtime issues, you can do a simple check using uh, a runtime check by the keyword type of. So type of is a way uh, of un you know, getting at runtime the value or the rather the type of the variable that you're dealing with. So in this case, it's Excel date, uh, Excel date value, and you can check, hey, is this number? So similarly, you can do this for string, Boolean, and so on, on an object as well. So once I wrap my um, logic here underneath the if condition, it'll ensure that it'll call that function to convert only if um, the data type is of type number. So when I run this, nothing happens because obviously it is um, not a number, right? And now if I copy back the same value and I run this, I'll get the date back, right? So this is um, this is a, a way of using, uh, working with range value types, uh, using type assertion as well as runtime uh, validation of the types to make sure that you're calling the functions only um, when at runtime it satisfies the condition that you're looking for, right? All right, so tip number three has to deal with um, the uh, understanding the uh, the argument type. So you're gonna use a ton of methods as part of your scripting. And you've, you've already seen, like for instance, I'm getting the range and I'm getting the value and so on. Some of these methods accept arguments. And to effectively use these methods, you need to understand what type of arguments you're dealing with. So in this case, you know, get range accepts an address, which is of type string. But in some cases, the uh, arguments could be, you know, more than one. It could be required, could be optional. Uh, in some cases, it may require uh, either an enumeration or an object type. So let's look at these two types a little bit more closely. So enumeration types are where um, Excel API in this case understands one of many uh, valid values that you can pass as arguments. It's not an arbitrary value. So in that case, it'll give you a select uh, list to choose from. So let's say if I want to clear uh, range A1, so I can use the clear method. And the clear method takes in um, Excel script clear apply to. So when you see sort of two segments here, you know that's either an object parameter or an enum parameter. So if you just simply type Excel script and clear apply to, notice that the intelligence stays at the top here to help you along. Uh, and then when I click dot, I'll get all the options that I uh, that I want to use, that I can use. So here I'm going to click uh, all. Uh, I'm going to clear the rest of the code here. And then I'm going to simply click run. So when I do that, it'll clear the A1 um, and it use the enumeration to determine what type of clear that I wanted to do. Now, so that's the enumeration. The second one is the object parameter. So the object parameter is a little bit um, tricky to understand. So let's look at this uh, up close. To do that, I'm gonna use the, the find all method that the worksheet has to offer. So in this code that I'm uncommenting here, uh, it gets the worksheet and it does a find all on that worksheet for the word breaks. And it's saying that in this second argument that the match case to be true. That means it's only gonna find when um, the, the case also matches. So you'll see that this parameter is included within the open and close curly, uh, curly parenthesis. What it means is that it is an object parameter and what goes inside, which is a key, and a value. So there's a key value pair that goes inside of the object parameter. So in case you don't know how to start, um, you can simply um, begin by opening open close parenthesis like that and take your cursor here inside the, the parenthesis and simply press control space and you will see all the options that it has to offer. You can use the up arrow key down arrow key to move around and you can also press on this um, little eye icon here and to understand that, hey, this is of type Boolean, and you can also read the description. So in this case, let's say I want to, um, I want to check. I don't. If I don't care about the match case, I'll say nope. I don't care about it. So false. 
So when I run this, um, it's gonna display some information. So let's look at what it actually displays. In line number seven, I'm simply getting the results, which is of range areas, and then getting the address, which is a string. So wherever that word is found, it's gonna give me the, the cell address of those, concatenated by a string like a comma. And then in line number 10 and 11, I'm gonna take the same, uh, the address string, and split that in, uh, into an array. So when you use a split, which is a string function, it splits that and returns an array back. So when I run this, you should see that this is the kind of the get address value, and this is sort of the same uh, string value converted into an array. Now, what if I change the match case to true? So in this case, it is not going to result in any value. So it's going to result in this type of error. So that is tip number four, which is how to effectively use the or handle the undefined uh, null values, right? So let's look at how to handle that scenario. Now, the reason why it is complaining is that uh, on line number seven, when I use the get address, it is complaining that, hey, you're calling get address on an undefined result. So the result is undefined because it didn't find any proper match. So when I try to call a method called get address on an undefined type, it's gonna throw an error. So a simple way to avoid that is to just check saying, hey, if result, so that means it is not a null, it is not an undefined. So null and undefined are two um, native JavaScript types that you wanna always handle carefully, otherwise you'll run into runtime issues. So I'm gonna uh, enclose the whole logic here inside this if condition, if result means it is a valid object type or a valid type that is not a undefined or a null. So when I run this, it's not gonna do anything because it, it didn't execute anything in here. So now when I've changed back the match case to be false, and I rerun it, and you'll get the same result back that we saw earlier because the if check uh, passed and it went inside. So that is tip number four for you, just effectively use or handle the um, undefined and null conditions when you are dealing with method results. Uh, now, moving to tip number five, which is um, showcasing sort of the dimensionality of the range. To do that, I have uh, another script here. I'll move back to tip number five script. And now uh, I talked about range earlier. So range is one of the most used object in with an Excel object model. Now range value that we just saw where I was able to read the uh, the date value and use that for computation. Uh, you may have noticed that I read a range value, which is a uh, singular, but there are also plural version of the same API, like read, read, uh, you know, getting values, getting formulas, and so on. And they all return two-dimensional array object. So that's because a range can be a single cell, it could be multiple cells. So since Excel doesn't know how, what kind of range you're reading, when you ask for get get me values, get me formulas, the plural version of these methods, it also always gives a two-dimensional object. To demonstrate that, here I have a table object, so which gets the first table in this worksheet, and it gets the texts. So on the range, on the header range, it gets the text. So table dot get header range header row range is this. So line number four, uh, A four through C four, and get texts. And when I simply display the header value you'll see that it's a two-dimensional array. Even though it's a single row, it always has two, it's always packaged into a, uh, the second dimension. Now what if I wanna just display this as a single dimension, as a 1, 1D array, so that I don't, I, you know, maybe I, can, I wanna use that, I wanna map through it, do some processing. You can just simply get the zeroth index knowing that it only has one row. So in this case, you'll see it, it comes across slightly differently here because it's, um, it's just as, a single dimensional array. So that's how you can extract a single row out of uh, multiple rows or out of a range that may have one or many rows. So that's the row. Um, this, the actual columns uh, is a little bit tricky. So here, let's say I wanna um, add $100 to each of the, the sales value and then add a new column. Uh, to do that, I can use uh, an API called add column. So add column here 
if I un uncomment and I can see that it accepts um, a single dimensional array object of type string number or boolean, right? So um, to do that, if I want to read this whole column value, I can use uh, the method here that I'm going to uncomment and demonstrate. So that is to use the the the, the get column by name sales and get its range value, which is the whole range, uh, and then get its values. So get values, you can see, returns a two-dimensional array object. Now the goal is to extract the sales, this whole thing, as a single-dimensional array object. So to do that, I have written uh, like a helper function here, extract column. So it accepts a two-dimensional array object of type you know, string number or boolean, and then it accepts an uh, index uh, and then um, it basically maps through the data and collects. So map is a way to collect uh, various aspects of each item of an array into another array. So it converts that into a single dimensional array by always getting the index that you wish to extract and then simply returns the column that you extracted. So I can then pass to this extract column function uh, as I'm doing in uh, line number 13 here. I can extract column of sales values, which is a two-dimensional array, array object, and says zero. So zero is the zeroth index. Uh, in this case, that is the only column that I'm going to have. So when I display uh, what I get back, you will see that um, I have. So this is the original uh, sales column. So you'd see it has a lot of rows, one per each sales value. But what I'm looking for is a, a one-dimensional uh, array, in this case sales, followed by one item for each of the, the amount item. So now um, I can then use that to add 100 for each, each cell. So here I'm using the map function again on the one dimensional array object that I got out of the function and I'm simply adding 100. So you'll see that I'm overriding this as a number and including 100, so as number is a type of session, if you recall from tip, earlier tip, and uh, TypeScript is able to uh, understand that and it's not warning me because of that reason. And then line number 21, I'm just simply calling add column, minus one is to say add it at the end, and then I'm passing this revised sales data. So if I run this again, you'll see a new column getting added um, with $100 added to each of the cells. Right, uh, so that's converting two-dimensional array into either a one-dimensional row or a, a one-dimensional column. Now, if you wish to convert this back for some reason, let's say I want to take the one-dimensional uh, object like here, in this case, the sales, back into two-dimensional, you can do that by writing a similar helper function that I had. Here, it converts a column into a 2D. It takes, in this case, a single uh, dimensional uh, array, like of string number or boolean, and then it returns a two-dimensional array object by returning, I'm mean, using the map again, it's collecting and enclosing that inside an another array. So it basically takes each item, packages into an array of its own, and then it puts an array over the entire, um, entire array, and then it converts it into a two-dimensional array. So if I display that again, um, I'm going to uh, use the convert column to 2D, pass the same sales as one dimensional array as an argument, and I'm going to just log that back. So you'll see that um, the, I'm going to get the same result back here as, as in the case when I originally read the range um, for the sales column. It, it added a new column, that's okay. Uh, so um, yeah, you can see that it's basically returning the same thing back to me here. I essentially converted a 2D to 1D column and then back to a two-dimensional array. So you'll end up finding yourselves in having to do this simply because of the nature of range. So that concludes the fifth tip. Uh, so hopefully this was useful for you. So if you uh, um, enjoyed watching this, please do leave a comment, uh, subscribe to this channel, and uh, hopefully um, will this will help you improve your productivity. Thank you.